comment from you, and then we will move on to questions. Yeah, congrats to uh, Texas. Their their guys showed up, wanted to win the game, as did ours, and, and they were able to get the job done today. Um, more importantly for me, thank you to Vol fans. Uh, the Vol walk on football Saturday is pretty impressive. It's a tradition that's gone on for a long, long time. Uh, but these kids somehow inspired the Vol walk for baseball to be created, and uh, it, it's, a, it's a pretty incredible sight and emotional thing. So thank you to those people, but also the people that just helped boost up our program into being an Omaha-type program. Uh, we, we hope to be that for, for multiple years, uh, not just this year. So can't make any promises, but obviously we'd like to do better next time. Uh, but don't want our kids to have any sort of guilt. Um, you know, they're good kids. You got a guy apologizing, and I'm apologizing to them, and I think that's what – you know, makes a good team is when you got each other's back and, and you want to see the guy next to you succeed more than you want it for yourself. Um, and disappointing day, uh, you know, probably uh, a, a lot of social media stuff can can make these guys seem like uh, they, they kind of want to be the bad boys. Uh, but there's just a bunch of kids that want to win for each other. And uh, some guys that off the field, you take that jersey off, they're, they're pretty soft and they're pretty good kids. Um, but when they throw it on, they do everything they can uh, to win for Tennessee and, and to win for each other. And I'm honored to have been around them for 50 wins and uh, obviously one loss too many. Thank you. Uh, we'll move to questions now. Mike Wilson. Yeah, Tony, when you were standing out there in the outfield, just kind of distant from, from your team all huddling together, what was going through your mind and and how do you keep a season like this in perspective with what you did versus how it ended? I think it's hard because uh, no, no disrespect to the opponent, j just didn't envision it today. And even in the ninth inning, maybe you get two outs and nobody's on. You start thinking, what do I say to the guys or anything like that? But we just, I mean, nothing's packed. I can tell you that. I got no idea how much longer we'll stay here, uh, but feel unprepared. Kind of like our two games. We didn't play that great even though a lot of preparation time was put in. If the results don't go well, you have to look at yourself as a coach and, and you know, wish you made different decisions because the ones you made didn't work. Um, but you get to that point, I really didn't have anything intelligent to say to the guys. Um, I just, you know, the old cliche, man, you, you go to a place, you'd like to leave it better than you found it. And, and holy cow, did these kids do that. So I was just out there looking after them, you know, Wanting to be able to do something to help, but at that point, they just wanted to share some time with one another. And, uh, you know, I mentioned to them in, in the locker room there that we, we need to do something else uh, to get together as a group rather than just kind of slamming the door shut on this thing. Um, you know, whether it's honoring the fans or the team or just getting together for a meal and being together one more time. Wes Rucker. Yeah, Tony, was anything about, I know emotion has fed y'all as a team so many times this season in a positive way. Did any of that create any any negative things today? Or, or was that were those two separate things, the execution not being great and then some of the emotion? No, I don't think so. I, I think um, it's either there or it's not. And I, 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 there's no way I can count on one hand total or how many digits you got. I mean, two, three times the guys didn't show up with – kind of their attitude or, or their behavior. I mean, certainly there was fluctuation and skill and performance, uh, but they just found a way for almost 70 games, however many it was, to show up and play vol baseball, if that's what you want to call it. And uh, we didn't do that game one here in Omaha for whatever reason. I mean, we, we sat and, and talked forever. It just wasn't there. So the goal today, obviously, is to win the game, but you know, we kind of put the scoreboard in our back pocket and just wanted to make sure the guys showed up with you know, the attitude that we're used to, and they did that. And so that's why the emotion was high and, and the way things were. And I think, you know, you get deflated in certain situations, um, but, but I didn't see anything that, you know, was like, uh, you know, a big weight on our shoulders holding us down, for lack of a better phrase. Ryan Shumpert. From your vantage point, just what did you see on the plate to plate in the fourth inning? And did you feel like that kind of took some juice out of your team and or anything like that? Well, I, I thought it was a really clean relay. I mean, Jordan Beck, uh, you know, got over there in a hurry, um, you know, got it to our infielders. They make a clean throw. Pav makes a clean tag. 
Um, so you, you kind of anticipated the thing being an out. Um, unfortunately, we've got replay in the dugout, and I, I think you're better off as team or coaches not seeing that stuff when they throw it up on the scoreboard or, or in the corner. Um, but obviously, it's one more run. I, I don't have a scale to weigh you know, how much of a punch in the gut that was to our guys or, or how much of a detriment that was other than just what was on the scoreboard. Uh, but, you know, five to four is different than, than six to four. Trey Wallace. Hey, Tony, just, just kind of looking at, at where you guys stood all season long and, and coming into this, how, how did you think – two questions. How did you think your batters were, were looking at pitches coming into today um, and getting through the Texas game? And then also, when you kind of look back, at your time this season with, with Tennessee, what are you going to remember the most about being around these kids? Sure. Um, you know, I, I think with the hitters, the thing they did different today was c kind of stay to the baseball a little bit more. I don't know that you'd call it staying within yourself from my vantage point. Uh, but guys got off cleaner swings. Uh, they were more sure of themselves and their takes. And really, again, I think they just got back to being themselves. It wasn't it obviously wasn't good enough, but it wasn't anything, you know, on the superstar side. But it also wasn't where you saw guys, you know, doing things on certain pitches that you would question. So, and then you know, as far as what I would remember with these guys, that's a tough thing to point out. You know, one deal, other than as a coach, you're always trying to learn, and uh, I learned a ton from the group on just how to get things done, how to act. Uh, how to respond in certain situations. Um, and then, the you know, <sighs> there's, there's a meme for all the people that don't like us that can, uh, well, I can't see any tears yet, but uh, was, was locked up in that condo for a long, <laughs> a long time, man, long time. And uh, then we had to watch these guys hit BP on the field by themselves, play catch, couldn't do anything. And then you got to be around them for a whole year. And it was a, a pleasure cruise. As much as you, you know, get angry at certain things or you got to go to COVID testing and stuff like that, um, it was, it was a, a good time. It was a really good time to be around those guys. And they, they created something. So... You get handed the baton, you run with it. That's one thing, and kudos to all those people that have done that. But these kids literally invented things, and uh, they did it in a really fun fashion. So, Troy Provost, Heron. Hey, Tony. Uh, just want to go back to that fourth inning, and you mentioned the perception about you guys being the bad boys and whatnot. When Ross gets tossed there, are you at all surprised that the guys didn't respond to that as well and kind of just what and kind of all the bad luck and whatever happened after that moment yeah I mean I, just because a guy gets thrown out it doesn't mean the next guy's going to hit a home run I think Ross acted like he did all year long so and a couple of those guys know him from his playing days so you know maybe that's kind of a thing but uh the guy was brought on to give us a brand name so um <laughs> You know, from my vantage point from, from prior to, uh, I certainly appreciate the work that was put into the program before we got here. Uh, but in my opinion, there needed to be a little more spice. And that's why that guy was added. And I think he brings that every day. So in that particular situation, uh, the eyes were on him and, and he was frustrated. Um, we brought in a guy to hit the mitt and I think Ross felt like he was hitting the mitt. And so if anything, standing up for his guy and also ensuring that we at least brought some passion to the field today. So whether it went awry or we misbehaved or whatever it might be, uh, no one's getting on that bus going back to the hotel saying, you know, we didn't show up or we weren't into it or we didn't have any fight to us. We'll go two more questions. Ben McKee. Yeah, Tony, just what, what did you see from Blade and Sean that maybe led to a lack of – uh, command there on the mound and, and do you think Sean maybe just ran out of juice there towards the end you know I think Blade um, you know was throwing the ball all right that they were on him for whatever reason um, I think he was getting frustrated about certain things uh, and then a third thing was there was just a, a handful of pitches where he didn't have the the conviction that I've seen out of him 
uh, you know, in the, in the past few weeks. That was just kind of my read. And uh, we, we felt good about the fact that it was a start to a new game. And the whole goal was, again, to get somebody out there to hit the mitt. And, uh, you know, I think in both situations, the, the big thing was we were one pitch away from, you know, getting out of two innings that uh, a lot of damage was done. And, you know, we threw it over the plate, which is what got us here. And uh, they were able to put a couple good swings on balls. Final question, Mike Wilson. Yeah, Tony, have you had any communication with LSU regarding its vacant coaching position? And, and do you expect to be the head coach at Tennessee next season? Uh, no, I have not had zero. And, um, you know, I just made an idiot out of myself, at least for all the masculine folks watching, by, by uh, getting teary-eyed about these kids. And that's where my focus has been. So, uh, like I said, it, the social life hasn't been existent for quite some time, uh, well before our opening day game. And a part of that is I want to do as good of a job as I can for the school that gave me a chance. And I want to do as good of a job I can for a group that we thought could go pretty far. Uh, and then, you know, the way the season evolved, like I said, I mean, the emotions certainly not fake. Uh, I don't know if it's embarrassing or not, but it's, it's coming from a place where that's my number one concern is, is these guys. And I'll go back to the, the room and anyone who knows me, it'll be bad. Uh, how much I critique myself, and it hurts. So I'm certainly not going to waste energy before a game or any other game uh, having regrets that, you know, my mind wasn't right or we weren't prepared the right way to go into whatever game it might be. Thank you, Coach. Congratulations on a good season. Thank you all. Take care.